Hi Cubies, here's Sir Alexander again and welcome to another video. This time we will talk about the role-playing game Pathfinder and about what you need, what you want, what to avoid and how to start. Well, there are several ways how to start the Pathfinder role-playing game, uh, also known as a tabletop role-playing game. Um, pen and paper RPGs are uh, generally uh, role-playing games where you only have a book, a rule book, and uh, a piece of paper where your character is, some dice and a pencil, and then you play it. So, <clears throat> but, um, well, Pathfinder is uh, one of the uh, greatest um, role-playing games out there uh, alongside Dungeons and Dragons. Why is that so? Well, because Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons share a common ancestor, and that was Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. At this stage, uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, had some iterations from uh, first edition, second edition, uh, then it uh, split up into advanced Dungeons and Dragons and Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, then they merged together again, and uh, 3.5 came out, and then came fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons, and Pathfinder. Well, um, because Pathfinder uh, is built upon uh, the uh, Roll20 uh, license, that uh, means um, the 3.5 edition of Dungeons and Dragons was an open source uh, uh, role playing game at this point, and so they uh, picked up the rules from 3.5 and uh, modified them and called this game Pathfinder. And that's what this is. So, there are basically two ways to start Pathfinder. Uh, well, you could start uh, with a, a starter box here, this uh, box set, or you could uh, purchase the core rulebook. Well, we will start uh, with a, a Pathfinder uh, starter set, look what it's, what's inside, and well, move along from there. So, first things uh, that will uh, pop into your uh, eyes will be uh, a set of dice. I have uh, already unpacked them and used them quite a lot, so they are in my dice box normally. Um, <clears throat> but let's uh, see what else we have in here. So, let's flip that over here and let's have a look. So, empty box. And so, we have uh, the uh, Game Master Handbook and the hero book. This is uh, like uh, always in Dungeons and Dragons. Normally you have the player's handbook and the game master handbook. So this is uh, the hero book. There are all informations uh, about how to uh, create a character, how to uh, uh, equip the character, then uh, give him uh, treats uh, and feats, equipment, special abilities abilities and uh, spells and so on. This is uh, in the player's handbook, or the hero book in this pa uh, part. And then you have the game master uh, handbook, which uh, is full of, well, the first part is actually uh, an adventure that you can uh, run with your uh, gaming group. Then uh, you have uh, here some information how to uh, guide your players as a dungeon master through uh, the game, then uh, talks a little bit about uh, uh, pre-written adventures, like this one here inside, how to uh, create your own adventures, and uh, then uh, talks about different environments, and traps, magical items, uh, yeah, more magical items, then monsters. Here's a whole bunch of uh, new monsters you can uh, throw at your uh, players. And uh, well, that's basically uh, what's here. Some conditions, some nice stuff in here. So then you have uh, in the box uh, pre uh, constructed characters the mage, the fighter. Uh, one uh, rogue, <clears throat> a cleric, and 
well, I guess, yeah, that's it. <clears throat> Four pre-made characters. Uh, you can uh, open these up and see the stat blocks and all the informations uh, you need for them. <clears throat> so, and then you have uh, for your gaming group uh, some uh, free sheets here you can use to make your own characters for additional then we have some commercial stuff let's get that out of the way then uh, something very interesting you have a, a play mat in here um, that is uh, quite large as you can see here uh, you can uh, unfold it completely, but uh, I won't. So uh, this is uh, plastic covered, so you could uh, draw on these maps with a, a so-called dry erase marker. Draw your own uh, dungeon map here. The backside you can see is, uh, well, covered in this grid uh, system uh, all the way. Uh, and on the inside you have an actual uh, already uh, created dungeon uh, for your adventure. Uh, let's have a deeper look inside here. Uh, let's unfold it. So there are some uh, nice details in there. Like here, there, a fountain of some sort, and here, a river and stuff. It's a neat little map you can uh, always use, especially uh, this one here. You can, like I said, with a dry erase marker, uh, repaint this every time. So, and then uh, you have here a bunch of uh, um, cardboard cutouts for monst monsters you can uh, use for your uh, campaign. And uh, what else is in the box? Normally uh, there's a bag of, uh, uh, well, uh, bases for these uh, cardboard, uh, cardboard things, but uh, I have put that out. So also here are uh, cardboard uh, holdout pushouts for your characters <clears throat> so but normally uh, I don't use uh, a grid based uh, game mode so this will stay inside here nice and cozy forever <laughs> <clears throat> so this is uh, like I said the, um, the starter set and uh, what can I say about this well the starter set is like it is uh, printed on the box for starters. It uh, has everything you need to know and to uh, uh, run campaigns up to the fifth level of uh, Pathfinder and uh, well for uh, 40 euros you can have a lot of fun with this. But uh, if you're serious uh, with the game um, this box um, is not enough for you. So uh, this box will last you for about, let's say, three to five game sessions until your player characters hit level five and then you need to expand uh, your stuff. You can uh, also see again the contents of the box with the dice, here the uh, little cardboard uh, thingies and stuff. So, um, for the small uh, money, this is definitely something for you, but quickly you will want to expand on it, so let's see what else do we have. Well, then there is this tome here. It is a massive book, the core rule book of Pathfinder. Um, why am I doing this video now? Well, Pathfinder had its run now completed. What that, what that means is Pathfinder has been finished. There is no, uh, no, uh, no publications anymore for Pathfinder because Pathfinder 2nd edition is uh, announced and so we can freely talk about everything there is about Pathfinder. So, um, <clears throat> right now, uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition uh, has, uh, in August uh, of this year, 2018, uh, announced that there will be the playtest uh, rulebook. But for Pathfinder 1st Edition, like this one here, uh, this is the rulebook. So don't 
get confused about the editions. So, um, what is this tome of uh, awesomeness? Well, this is a tome worth of over 575, 76 pages. And there you can see it's 576 pages and it covers a lot of stuff. As you can see, I have uh, nice little bookmarks here along the uh, the pages. What does it contain? It contains everything you need to know to create characters, uh, the uh, different uh, races of uh, Pathfinder here in the core rule books are elves, gnomes, half elves, half orcs, halflings, humans and dwarves. Obviously in Pathfinder you can uh, play other different uh, races also, but uh, they are uh, covered in different publications. Then you have the core classes from the core rulebook here, a Barbarian, Bard, Druid, hey, um, uh, uh, what's it called in English, uh, the Hexenmeister, the, uh, not the Wizards, uh, uh, the other uh, witch master, I don't know, uh, Fighter, Clerics, uh, Mage, Monk, Paladin, uh, um, Rogue and uh, Ranger. Uh, what is it called? Uh, I can't wrap my mind around. Sorry. Um, then here you have uh, everything about uh, the skills, the talents, uh, your equipment, uh, game rules, obviously, uh, how to uh, fight, how to use magic, how to uh, uh, use spells uh, in particular. Then you have here prestige classes to uh, further uh, uh, make your character even more insane. <laughs> so you have uh, here the uh, arcane uh, archer or the arcane uh, thief, the assassin, dragon hunter, duelant uh, and so on. Then is here a chapter uh, for uh, running the game. Here's a big chapter about the environment. All the stuff that you have already seen in the uh, player's handbook in the uh, starter box set, but way more uh, sophisticated in here. They go way more in depth in this book uh, than how to uh, create NPC characters. Uh, here's a whole chapter about uh, a big chapter, uh, over 100 pages long, uh, about uh, magical items. Uh, special uh, skills, uh, special uh, conditions, and so on. So let's uh, quickly uh, flip through a few pages to uh, show you how this uh, looks like. Here this is uh, spell lists, then uh, spell lists and spell lists, and more. And there you can see some of the nice illustrations here in this uh, book. <coughs> Weapons. And more. Here, yeah, more illustrations. It is uh, full colored, as you can see. And uh, only downside is that the uh, pages are quite flimsy. Um, they are thinner than a normal magazine page. <clears throat> I think they uh, did this to uh, don't make this book too heavy. Uh, it is already quite a heavy book, but you can uh, purchase this uh, also in the uh, uh, pocket format, like this one here. This is uh, the uh, player's uh, um, the Game Master handbook, and uh, this is uh, quite <coughs> a little bit shorter version of uh, the core rulebook, so you can get this in this format if you so desire. Um, well, if you really want to start the game, you need this. But what else do you need? Well, there are a lot of books to choose from. So let's uh, have a look of what is out there that you can choose from. You have the little books that look like this. Those are uh, for the cheap uh, pocket, pocket change money. <laughs> So, uh, for example, this here is uh, 19 euro 95 for this little book. This is, uh, for example, a book 
full of monsters. <coughs> this is a neat addition for uh, the first uh, game session. So, for example, if you uh, are starting out with a Pathfinder uh, starter set and you want to uh, cheaply expand your monster uh, capabilities as a game master, the Almanac of, of Monsters from Golarion are, uh, is a, a good buy. I can highly recommend it. It's uh, nice and cheap and fits well. So, then you have uh, this here, uh, the Almanac of uh, uh, Dungeon uh, Monsters. <clears throat> this I would not recommend. You have uh, only a few, a handful of uh, monsters in here. Um, it's like seven monsters or something like that. And uh, they go into uh, detail here about the monsters itself, about their backstory and uh, some additional uh, versions of them. But uh, overall, um, from the variety standpoint, uh, I would not recommend this book. This is uh, something, if you really, really want to complete your uh, collection of Pathfinder books, yes, yes, you can go for it, but uh, this isn't a must. <clears throat> Same goes for uh, this kind of books here. This is, uh, These are some uh, books that uh, describe uh, the world of Galarian and uh, uh, tinier part of Galarian, for example, this here is Taldor, and uh, this is uh, a little handbook uh, for this specific region of the world. You have there uh, several of these, uh, for example, here, Almanac of the Sunken uh, 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 Ruins, again, Ruins of Galarian, this not, this not, this is, here also, this Almanac, or for uh, some mega dungeons, then oh, this also not. not uh, there we have another uh, almanac for uh, power uh, uh, groups in Golarion. Here we have uh, some uh, pirate uh, stuff uh, around uh, Golarion's coastlines. Then we have uh, this here again. Talking about pirates of the inner sea, uh, uh, river kingdoms, and uh, those books are uh, nice. I'm gonna. Uh, this is something else. Uh, here we have another uh, almanac for monsters uh, that I told you before about the dungeon monsters. This is, is the same for some classic monsters. I would not recommend this one here. But uh, all these here, the Almanachs, uh, they um, talk about the backstory of uh, Golarion. Um, they give you some uh, insight and here and there some uh, um, adventure ideas and adventure hooks and something like that. But uh, they are definitely not a must for your uh, campaigns and uh, for your setting, especially if you don't run uh, your uh, campaigns in the... Uh, <coughs> Uh, setting of Pathfinder, uh, it's called Golarion, and uh, if you don't want to run there, you absolutely don't need these kinds of books. So let's put them aside, as it definitely may be. So uh, then uh, stuff that uh, you would want to consider this year is the Almach. Almanac of Prestige Classes. This here expands the Prestige Classes of the Core Rootbook. This is something uh, I would recommend. Um, there are some uh, neat little uh, extra uh, stuff for your players in there. Uh, well, like I said, it's nice. Uh, it expands uh, the uh, uh, possibilities of your player characters and, uh, well, go for it. <coughs> Then something uh, I would not recommend at all. This here, um, Dungeon Dwellers and uh, Dragon Hunters. This is uh, also a handbook uh, that uh, talks about two different things. Uh, the Dragon Hunters of Golarion and, uh, well, how to uh, delve into a dungeon. There is actually almost nothing useful in this book. I would not recommend this, so just throw it away. 
So uh, then we come to um, essential things uh, for many player uh, players and uh, dungeon masters alike. These are the uh, pre-written adventures. Um, I personally, I'm a game master who um, or dungeon master who um, uh, not normally uses uh, pre-written adventures. I uh, pick sometimes uh, nice ideas from them and. Uh, um, insert uh, them into my own uh, settings and uh, games, for example, if there are uh, descriptions of towns, for example, or several uh, interesting monsters or uh, campaign settings or interesting NPCs, uh, I can uh, simply grab them out of the module and uh, <coughs> uh, insert them into my campaign. Um, from this three adventures here, the um, the swear stone, then uh, dragon. Uh, I don't know how that how to pronounce that in English. And the game of towers. Um, this two here I would not recommend. They are terrible. They are short. They are not very uh, detailed, and uh, they are terrible to run. And the story isn't very great. So I would not recommend those. If you find them for cheap or in a bunch, in a bulk, and they are added to the collection, okay, go for it. But uh, on their own, I wouldn't recommend those. <clears throat> this here, on the other hand, this is um, an adventure for level 1 characters. And uh, actually, this here is four adventures in one. So, uh, <clears throat> to uh, give you a little bit of a plot hook here... Um, you start at the uh, um, at a tiny little town called Shellacker, and um, in this uh, you have also a map of uh, this town. I have uh, ripped that out here. I don't know where I have it right now. It must be here somewhere. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Do I have it here? No, that's the map of Guarian. Hmm. Why do I have it? I don't know. Well, somewhere in my uh, stuff is it. Well, uh, like I said, you start in the uh, little town of Shellacker. Uh, your um, uh, player characters are supposed to be uh, some uh, caravan uh, guards and uh, they get uh, arrested. Um, but actually only the caravan leader gets arrested and uh, the player characters uh, went free. This is a pre-adventure, so uh, you can uh, tell them how they uh, spend like two hours in prison and then they get uh, released because they have nothing to do with it. Uh, the uh, caravan leader is arrested for uh, burglary and uh, other stuff and smuggling and stuff. And, uh, well, then their player characters are uh, stranded in this little town called Shalakar, where they don't want it to be. They just wanted to uh, travel the world, meet interesting people, and kill them all. Well, like all adventure murder hobos, <laughs> you know. Um, well, and then... Uh, Something interesting start in the, starts in this town, and uh, so they uh, the characters are thrown into adve into an adventure that uh, runs uh, to uh, several dungeons. This is uh, definitely a dungeon driving adventure uh, with uh, three uh, big dungeons in there, and uh, well, you have uh, some nice maps here in this uh, <coughs> in this adventure book, and I can highly recommend this. So, if you uh, want to look for an adventure uh, hook, this is the one uh, you want. So, then uh, we have uh, toggled the elephant in the room quite enough. Let's address him. What you really need. <clears throat> this was all the tiny little stuff. Now we come to the big and chunky little stuffs. There are basically two things as a GM you need. Those two. The monster manual 
and the Game Master Handbook. Which one to go first? Obviously the Monster Handbook. Without the Monster Handbook uh, you can't run a game. You can't have monsters without the Monster Handbook. In the Core Rulebook there is not a single monster. So, which Monster Handbook? Well, there are at least six different versions out there of this uh, big tome here. This is quite a thick little hardcover book and it has a lot of monsters. Monsters over monsters over monsters, even more monsters and monsters and monsters. In all different challenge ratings from small little tiny uh, gnomish little gnoblar things with a challenge rating of one quarter to uh, big scary things like this here to 16 to uh, here, the Tarask level 25. <clears throat> Here's everything in it. And uh, which one to go for? I would totally recommend the first one, Monster Handbook number one. And, uh, well, the others are totally optional. I only have this one. This is plenty. This is plenty. So, what do you need the Dungeon Master Guide for, you're asking? Well, what this little tomb. Uh, has to offer for a dungeon master is quite a lot. It's quite, quite, quite a lot. <clears throat> so, uh, there are uh, chapters about uh, how to run games, uh, game characters, uh, not NPC characters, how to uh, give out uh, loot, then uh, how to cre create worlds, create adventures, um, other uh, stuff like drugs and uh, secrets and uh, how to um, gamble and uh, <clears throat> NPC gallery. This is uh, also quite interesting. Where well, the monster handbook has all kinds of monsters in there, uh, this here has uh, a list of NPCs here, like for example, Towns Guard, then uh, Soldiers, Seers, Travelers. Uh, plundering pirates, military personnel, criminals, more criminals, crusaders, uh, king's stuff, uh, traitors and heretics, <coughs> vendors. So, this is a nice addition uh, as a, a game master for the first uh, few adventures. Uh, you can uh, grab stuff from there. Um, then you have uh, several uh, lists and uh, stuff for your uh, magic items. <clears throat> All this and more, and I I can't I can't praise enough this book. This uh, is for. For especially for a starting game master, the tomb you want to have. There is so much useful information for you in there. It is worth triple its uh, its money. So go for this absolutely. So <clears throat> I showed you in the uh, game master handbook. Um, there was an NPC gallery. This book explodes this uh, uh, idea. This is a book full of NPCs. When the player handbook all were human characters, uh, you have everything here in every shape and gender, in every uh, race, uh, race and class, from uh, level 1 characters to level 20, you find here everything. Stats for everything you can possibly look for in an NPC that you want to run in your game. This book is great for uh, dungeon masters who don't want to create their own NPCs, that uh, just want to grab NPCs uh, from the get-go and, well, run out of the, uh, run out of the pocket. <clears throat> so, this is a great tomb to have uh, for a dungeon master. Um, also, um, all the level 1 characters in here you can totally use as player characters, as uh, pre-created uh, uh, characters. Also, uh, you could um, 
totally start with a higher level character for example if a player uh, joins a party at a later point he could uh, pick a player character that is higher level from here it's quite easy to uh, manage or if uh, you start uh, with a level 7 party for example you could pick a level uh, 1 or 3 or level 4 character from here and uh, well expand on this and uh, level up all the way to 7 for example those are your possibilities so and uh, where the players hand uh, the game master's handbook also had some magic items in it if you want to ro go real nuts you need this. <clears throat> this is uh, the book for uh, game masters who uh, have run quite a lot of it and extensive uh, dungeon dwarves and uh, your player characters uh, are all equipped with level 1, 2, 3 uh, magic items plus 3 weapons and you want to go for something more unique you can uh, go for stuff in this. Here is everything. Absolutely everything. This is so packed full with stuff, with magic items from all kinds of ranges. This is insane. This book is absolutely insane. If you want to uh, give your player characters something that they cherish, this is the book for you. Well, then we come to the last two books I have here. The first one is talking about uh, the campaign setting that um, Pathfinder is set on. This is Golarion, the world. And this is the book for it. The Inner Sea. <clears throat> this uh, tomb talks about everything in uh, in this world. All the regions, all the uh, different uh, races and factions uh, that are in here. Every little, uh, tiny little section of the map is uh, inserted here and some information over them but uh, as you can see uh, each faction gets three or four pages and that's it so um, <clears throat> for more in-depth stuff I have shown you the uh, Amanas for the Fessel Archipel for example or uh, Taldor those uh, go into a further detail where this is uh, just glancing over it but uh, for an overall uh, view of the world and uh, to see where uh, your player characters can go in the world and uh, if they have a detour to a different landscape you can grab this book and see for yourself what is out there before your uh, imagination runs out of stuff. This is a neat little book if you want to run in the world of Galarian. But what if you don't want to run in the world of Galarian? What if you are a absolutely pro player uh, and uh, you want to run in the world that play takes place in Exandria? What is Exandria, you uh, ask? Well, Exandria is the world from a uh, world famous dungeon mat uh, voice actor extraordinaire Matthew Mercer then you want to have this tool Taldor the campaign setting by Matthew Mather, Mercer <clears throat> if you are not familiar with it uh, Matthew Mercer and uh, some other voice actors are running a Dungeon and Dragons uh, campaign uh, in the world of Exandria for uh, over two years now and uh, on the um, Geek and Sundry uh, YouTube page, you can find a playlist uh, of all their stuff. And on Twitch, uh, they stream every Thursday. There comes the phrase, is it Thursday yet? <laughs> and, uh, well, for a world uh, 
created for just one campaign, this is awesome. This is really, 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 really awesome. So, uh, <clears throat> to be honest, this book is better than the Pathfinder uh, version. Um, okay, this book is normally uh, tailored to Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, there's no rule that uh, you can't also use this for Pathfinder. Um, it's absolutely usable for it. So, speaking of which, Dungeons and Dragons. There is the fifth edition. We have the Dungeon Master Guide here, and the Monster Manual, and the Starter Set. Um, I'm still waiting uh, for my Player Handbook and the Tomb of Annihilation uh, book, and uh, I can give you a rundown uh, about those if I will finish them <laughs> reading. But this might take a while. Um, on a later date. <laughs> so, I hope you like this uh, little detour about Pathfinder and all the stuff there is. I hope you like this video. And well, we see us in the next video. You're Alexandra.